I received this Lego truck set in 1974 when I was five years old. I have been a non-stop Lego fan ever since. Then along comes Kobe of Poland with their Lego compatible, very high quality brick sets. What truly excites me is their great war stuff. Can you be a fan of war? Especially now when we're reminded of the awfulness of what's happening in the Ukraine. I guess what we're really fans of are the machinery and the ingenuity uh, of that period. This video is going to be a review of the Kobe of Poland's brick British Mark V male tank from the Great War. This is a model of the very actual surviving tank that is in the Bovington Tank Museum in Great Britain. This is not going to be a build video. If you want to see a really good build video, look at Brick Meat. His video of the build is quite good. I ordered this from the Bovington Tank Museum. A great thing about ordering from their gift shop as well is that you can leave a small donation if you want to, to the museum in general. And I've enjoyed their YouTube videos so much that I, that I have left some donation. I have been a lifelong fan of the British World War I tanks. And in among all these books and magazines, there's as many articles and uh, things about the British Mark I through Mark V tanks that I could find. That is until I discovered the Bovington Tank Museum. Uh, online. It's through their gift shop that I got this. While I was at it, I also ordered this from there. The Bovington Tank Museum uh, YouTube channel is an amazing, excellent resource. I'm also a fan of the French Renault tank. Again, enter the Bovington Tank Museum's gift shop. Of course, we have to have a captured Sturmpanzerwagen A7 V. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. <laughs> you can imagine my excitement when I learned this was coming out. As usual, the manual is very good. I find it even better than the one for the Mark I tank. Uh, the Mark I tank doesn't even have a list of parts in the back like this. And unlike the British Mark I, this came with the Bovington Tank Museum Mark V signboard. All in all, it was a very enjoyable build. However, in this video, I am going to show you a couple of teeny tiny simple modifications I did that I think make the tank even better. When I watched Brick Meat's video, he showed the tank side by side with the Mark I. And, oh! It's not the same scale, and that greatly, greatly disappointed me. I have to say I was totally bummed, and let's, I'll show you what I mean. Not the same. I was hoping it was going to be the same scale as this. This scales out to about 1 to 28. I measured it one time, and I think it comes out to 1 to 28. For good measure, I measured this one as well and did the calculation. Yes, it's 1 to 35. So, yeah, at first I was like, oh, totally bummed. It's not the same scale. Can I put it in the same scene? Well, yes, I can. I'll just separate them in different parts of the scene. One thing I noticed as soon as I built it is, and you don't get the sense in the video, the quality of it. The video does not give you the sense of the, the heft and the quality, how the, it rolls so easily, whereas this one doesn't. This is a quality, detailed brick uh, um, thing that, you know... Of all my Kobe, this is my favorite. Honestly, this is such a lovely, lovely, lovely brick model. So I'll do a quick walk around, but first I'm gonna put, you know, we've got our friend here, the British Bulldog. This is a Lego Bulldog. That seems appropriate, doesn't it? Unlike the British Mark I tank, which has the view opening armored viewing hatches in the front, which incidentally I put Lego people in, this is just pad printed. Now, speaking of pad printing, the whole thing is pad printed, which I love. As a later mark of tank, it has the uh, the unditching beam where uh, if they get stuck in a ditch or a trench, they affix this these chains to the track, and the tank you know that runs over the beam, and the beam helps them unditch. Now, of course, it's a brick model, uh, so you know you you, you can't really be picky in a review about accuracy, but it should be a trapezoid shape in the real thing and probably brown because it was a beam. But am I going to complain? It's a brick model. This is fantastic. Look at it. Great detail. So it does have some features. It's got a machine gun right here. It's got a machine gun right here. It's got the, because it's a male tank, it's got the cannon there in the sponson. Same thing on the other side. Let's see if I can do this without knocking down the poor bulldog. And back here, there's the machine gun position. But it also, when you open it, this is uh, the hatch. Now, it doesn't open quite as far as it could because I changed the orientation of this, which I'll get to right now and why. I feel that the designers are trying to get the barrel length as accurate as possible. But of course it's a brick model, so we can cheat a bit here and there, right? Um, as described in the kit, when the barrels are in the sponsons in their turrets, they, they kind of stick out enough that you can see the clip-on for the barrel. So what I did was without, and it doesn't affect at all the movement of the, of the turret, but I set the barrel in a little bit farther. So I modified that, and as you can see, it sets in a bit. 
And I think it looks better. It just looks nicer. It looks more realistic. Also, the machine guns, as uh, in the instructions, are, are oriented up and down. So I just turned them sideways because I think this looks more... I mean, they, they, they won't go up and down and sideways, but I think it's more realistic for a setting, if you're setting a scene with these, to have them be able to sweep that way than up and down. I think it looks better. Even our dog agrees that the guns look a little better this way. This is a fine detailed model with the Mark V's exhaust suppressor or muffler, I guess, and the exhaust pipe system that comes down here. It's just wonderful. And of course the Mark V, you know, they long dispensed with the steering mechanism they had at the back as on the Mark I. Another neat feature is that this is designed to pop right out. And you can take your tank commander and you can put it right down there in the hatch. Speaking of the tank commander, this guy's really poseable. And the pad printing is really detailed. It's really fine, well done, great quality. All in all, I give this Kobe tank very high points. These guys think so as well, but not this guy.